Well, this is just great. I uh, went up town and got some oil and everything. I was going to change it in this thing because it's been uh, over a year. And uh, I turned down a couple miles from my house, turned down a road, and I lost power and uh, had a misfire. I'll show you. Still have a misfire. You can kind of see how it shakes, but got it home, looked at the codes. Yeah, you can really tell there. And it had a P0302. So I've got a mis misfire on cylinder two. And I'm not sure why yet. So we're gonna pull it in. And uh, I'm gonna take a look at the plug first, I think. Because it might be an ignition problem, but I can kind of hear Well, it almost sounds like a little bit of a tapping. Maybe that's just some random noise. Yeah, but you can see the motor shake. And it's uh, cylinder two is the problem. So, probably uh, see if I can make this go away, check out the ignition system, and hopefully that's the problem. Well, I swapped out the uh, plug and the wire, and it didn't uh, didn't cure my problem. And I know I pointed to this wire when I said cylinder two. I was uh, still thinking about that van. I think that one's on them 60 degree V6s. That's where the the number two is. But on this one, it's in the back here, and uh, I swapped out the plug and the wire for that one. And I got nothing. It didn't fix my problem. And it, you know, it, it, it I still think I hear like a, a slight tapping noise real hard to tell but it's more noticeable right away when you first fire it up um, so maybe I've just got a, a sticky lifter because this happened to me actually I think two winters ago I uh, I would fire it up when it was cold outside and that sucker would just wrap you could hear it you know from a mile away it was noisy as hell and uh, it would also run rough and throw a I think it was a 302, I can't remember now, but it would throw that code, and uh, and then it would warm up, and it would kind of go away, and I ended up putting some Marvel Mystery Oil in it, and that seemed to solve the problem. So, since I've got the oil, and uh, I even have some Marvel Mystery Oil left, I think I'm going to change the oil, and run it for a while, and see if it clears up. If not, I may have to uh, dig into it, but... I think we'll try the easiest route first and see if it uh, see if it does that, see if it fixes it. Well, I was jacking it up to change the oil, and uh, <laughs> I noticed something. This side of the car was really low, and it's been like that for a long time, and I never bothered looking at it. And this side would always clunk, um, kind of like that that spring would tension up and snap, you know, like boing. And I always thought it was uh, just the strut bearing up underneath here was just uh, shot so I ignored it but I actually took a look at it and eh, you can't really tell but the spring the top part of the spring is actually broken I mean all these pieces that you see here should uh, actually be tucked up tucked up under there Let's see if I can get a good shot here like this there should be a spring on that and it should be way up top and uh, I felt my hand around the back side here, and the springs actually broke. So that's why she makes noise, but uh, that's not my main concern right now. i got to crawl under it here and change the oil. No sense in fixing this side if uh, it's not going to run right. So, Alright, I've changed the oil. Uh, I did find a little bit of uh, a metal, on the uh, just a tiny bit on the magnet. Not really too big of a deal, I don't think. But, uh, I got four quarts of oil in it and uh, about a quarter of that Marvel stuff. And uh, now we'll just fire it up and see if that helps it at all. Just let it run and let that work through and see if it smooths it out at all. Because it was, you know, a pretty instant problem when it showed up. I made it turn the corner and it just immediately started running rough, so... Maybe it was just uh, you know 
chunk of crap got lodged in that lifter or something. We can cross our fingers and we can hope. See what happens. Well, I let it run for a, for a while and uh, that didn't seem to help at all. So I went back to the codes. And it had like eight codes, most of them just garbage codes like the gas cap and whatever. But I did go through and I found two that were for the EGR. So maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, I would think that if it was the EGR I would get a general misfire of 300 rather than just a 302. But, well, you know, what What the heck, uh, we can take her off there and take a peek and just see what's going on. Well, I've got it off here, and, you know, everything looks pretty clean. I don't see much, uh, really much buildup on it. You know, no big chunks of crap coming off, but, uh, since I have about 8 million Buicks, I just, uh, went and grabbed another one. Figure we can swap it out. This one's actually a little dirtier, but we'll see, uh, if maybe, maybe it was the EGR screwing up. I don't know, I doubt it, but we'll give her a shot. Well, I think I may have found my culprit. I don't know if you can hear that hissing noise. I, I didn't notice that before, but I sure hear it now. Looks like I've got a bit of a vacuum leak there. So it looks like I'll have to pull that apart and see what the heck's going on with that. But yeah. I think that uh, could be my issue. Well, I got all the uh, pieces out of there, and as you can see, that O-ring right there was actually rolled, allowing a bunch of crap to go through. And uh, the tab was actually broken off on this. I don't know if that made a difference or not. Maybe not. Well, I don't know. It looks like it's pretty much all there except for that other side of the clip, but. Yeah, that O-ring in there was all rolled up, so I was letting air in. Fortunately, I have a whole new bag of parts here that I can use to swap in. I have a whole new intake, but I'm not going to do all that work. So I'll just put a new valve in, and uh, i got a brand new plastic cover there and a spring and everything. And we'll see if that helps. Well, I managed to fix a pretty big... Uh, vacuum leak there but it didn't fix my problem unfortunately <clears throat> uh, and the more I look at this thing the more problems I find you know it's just it's a bunch of problems that have been there for probably a long time but I never bothered fixing them or even looking into them because you know the car worked now that it's not working I gotta start looking at things so I fired it up and uh, it didn't fix it but I did notice um, a rattling noise from underneath the car sounded like it was coming from the exhaust kind of maybe the catalytic converter area so I think tomorrow I will uh, just unbolt the exhaust ahead of the cat and see if that gets rid of it because it's still giving me the general misfire and it's when you load it up it just runs like crap so I think uh, tomorrow I'll try that and uh, that's my problem maybe I can get it fixed weird though it just immediately happened like I could tell right away that it wasn't running the same so but we'll find out tomorrow well I've got it up in the air here and uh, let's fire it up and I'll crawl under and I'll show you the sound it's making from the cat you can hear it pretty clear not an exhaust shield or anything that the cat itself rattling like that so I figure we'll disconnect it and see if it uh, runs any better with that off I've never actually had a bad cat before so I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking for but you know with the lack of power when it's under load and uh, the general misfire code and the fact that that sucker is making a heck of a racket you know leads me to believe that maybe maybe the cat is gone so I gotta crawl under there figure out how to get it off 
can grab my light here and show you. Plus, it stinks now that it's been around in a while. But yeah, this don't look like it's going to be easy. I've got a huge flange here and uh, four bolts on it that are rusted to nothing. So those are going to break when I try to take it off. I could go further up on the engine, but I don't think I'd have too much better luck up there. And uh, that would be harder to do anything with if I did get it off. So I think I'm going to try these bolts, yank them off, and uh, if I fire it up and I put it under load and it runs better, it'll be louder, but if it runs better, then I know that uh, the cat is my problem. So I suppose I better crawl under there and snap some bolts. Well, kind of amazingly, I got all four of them nuts off the converter. I had to uh, use a vice grip to get them off, but uh, they did come off. So let's fire it up. It's going to be loud, but we can see if we got any power back. Nope, runs the same. Great. Well, at least I know it's not the cat. Well, I found my problem. After the cat didn't fix it, I decided to go ahead and take these coils off and clean them all up and everything. And uh, started swapping them out. I took a good one off, and uh, that coil is no good. I didn't see any you know, big cracks in it or anything. But uh, as soon as I put that other one on from a different car, fired right up and ran like a top so yeah probably should have just kept going when I saw that cylinder 2 misfire but I thought maybe I would get a cylinder 5 as well you know if the coil was bad but I didn't but at least I got it fixed now and uh, I fixed uh, the other issue I had so that was a good thing and uh, also got to hear it without the exhaust on it, it was kind of cool but now that's fixed I gotta bolt the cat back up and I got all my bolts, I might just throw them back in with a vice grip and call it good. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I got it fixed because I, I got to go to work tomorrow. So I'll throw that cat back on, we'll lower it down and uh, back her out. Well, there we go. Yeah, I should have known it was that stupid coil. I've replaced so many of them, but. Oh well, it didn't cost me anything, except for the oil change, which I needed anyway. So, on to, well, I suppose that van, I gotta still figure out what's going on with that. See if I can make that sucker run.